we start by saying how sweet it is to be home. I mean, wow, that, the credit, this does not sound funny, goes 100% to our fans. They, they're the ones that won that game, that final drive. I, I'm gushy, I'm giddy about how great they were. You want to talk about what, what it was, 32,000 or 132,000? That last drive, what they were able to do as a crowd, it, it's been a long time since I've seen something like that. So credit to them. They showed up, they showed out. It started with the title walk. Uh, it's just a, a fantastic way to celebrate the city, right? We talked about, you know, with the, the celebration of the 901. And I mean, I, I can't say enough great things about how wonderful that crowd was. So they get credit for the win. Um, you know, I was proud of our guys' uh, perseverance throughout the game. It was not always pretty. We have a ton to work on. We know that. Um, but we showed some flashes of life. We got to continue to be more consistent. And that's one of those things that we're going to continue to preach as we go back to work tomorrow. Uh, get healthy and find ways to continue to improve our game in so many facets. Offense, defense, and special teams have to find ways. Um, but what it did show today, again, is our guys are continuing and willing to battle. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, that's one of the things about this team, and we can hang our hat on that, that we'll continue to, to fight and, and give everything we have. Credit to Arkansas State. That's a fantastic football team. Uh, well coached. They played very hard. They got some fantastic players. Uh, credit to them. They're going to win a lot of football games. Uh, but uh, I was proud of our guys tonight, uh, just with more anything, the way they just kept fighting and finding a way to finish. And that's the reality of college football these days, finding a way to finish. Because the ebbs and flows of a college football game, there's so many ups and downs. And our, our guys found a way, no matter what it looks like. Uh, you know, early on, right, I told you guys we wanted to be more consistent running the football. It showed up in the fourth quarter. I guess that's when it matters, right, and find a way to end the ball. Uh, end the game with the ball in your hands, right? Defense getting that stop, and then what we said, and then, you know, Seth Hennigan continues to play at a high level, continue to find a lot of weapons, right? Caden Prescorn, a guy that I talked to you guys about prior, stepped up in a big time way, but um, overall, great team win, um, but a lot of things to work on, and, and looking forward to having a, a great crowd here next week versus North Texas. You know, Caden preschool, what a lot of people don't know, is he came here as a really a walk-on quarterback. That's what he was in high school. You know, he's grown into a, a grown man, if you will. I tell him he still needs to continue to grow. But he's every bit of six five and a half, almost 260, and, and runs well. So that's a great red zone target. You talk about those guys, those tight ends sometimes. Uh, you know, the quarterback's able to find those guys. And then, you know, that block for Seth. We knew good and well Seth wasn't going to hand the ball if he was going to keep it himself. Uh, we talked about that all week. We actually joked around about it. But... Uh, Caden's been, I mean, just kind of showing the consistency he was able to do some of those tough catches, right? Stuff that we didn't get to see early on, but we know he's capable and just proud of him and his efforts. And he's going to continue to be a huge, not only a red zone target, but for, uh, you know, uh, somebody that we can trust in the passing game, run game, all those things. Um, really proud of his effort tonight. Yeah, um, it was. You know, there's some of those fourth down decisions that are, Jeff, that are gut, right? You know, you sit there and you say, okay, what do we do, right? And, you know, we, we had that first down, fourth down early. You know, the one that will stick in my call tonight that will allow me not to sleep is the fumbled snap on the fourth and short. And that's going to haunt me and say, okay, is there something we do? We practice so many stuff from inner center. Then you go to some of those other fourth downs where we'll get just lining up and running inside zone and coming off the football like we're capable. Um, but being able to get that fourth down conversion, the Canadian was like, okay, here we go. Um, we got faith in what we're able to do, but uh, we. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we knew we were going to have to go for it. It's just one of those things. That, there's analytics that are involved in a lot of stuff, but reality. Sometimes I just got to use my in my head coach, head coaching gut and see what the heck I think's best. And uh, I've got full faith in our guys to go out there and execute it. Uh, we knew if for some reason it didn't. Obviously, we'd need those timeouts, but. The execution um, by those guys on that fourth down was uh, obviously tremendous. Great job by them. Did you go into the game expecting to be going for all four down like you did? I don't know what to expect going into every game. They're all battles. And, you know, I've talked about this over the years. I think, you know, now going my third year, I'm certainly going to continue to learn a lot as a head coach. But we're seeing more and more teams in college football that are being more aggressive on fourth down. And one, it's having faith in what our defense can hopefully do, what the offense go out there and execute it. And then you start to look at it. And I'm not a big stack guy. But you say, OK, well, if there's a 65% conversion rate, does that make more sense? And then some of those also where we were, you know, where the ball was in the you know, middle of the field, right? you pooch one, OK, is it going to be a net gain of 25 yards, is it really worth it, or is it worth the risk reward? 
um, and doing that stuff. Uh, as we got closer, you get able to gain a little bit more confidence in our kicker who's doing a nice job. So um, I think moving forward, we're always going to be, okay, if, if we go forward on fourth down, does it make sense? And um, a lot depends on how the, uh, the, the feel of the game. Uh, but we got great confidence in our offense. And then if it doesn't work out, that our defense will be able to go out there and get the stuff. Brian, you guys have had some playmakers now in the last two weeks, whether it's skates and free scoring, obviously. Now I have three touchdowns in two games. Jay, obviously, two. Um, two games. One, what does it say about these new guys starting to kind of find their way here? And second question, between Ducker and skates, it seems like the transfer portal has, has benefited so far from you guys. I think, yeah, I think, right, it's just like with anything. Um, proud of to see so many guys, and I talked about our depth, right, and I think that was one of those things we talked about in the preseason. I, I really like, you know, this whole roster management, we'll all get back to the transport, is building equity and depth, whatever the heck that looks like, and hanging on to it, right, and so finding those guys, right, depth at wide receiver, seeing different guys step up. Right, you guys would say, well, the first game, you really didn't target skates much. The second game, you only targeted him on a few plays. Okay, he was able to step up uh, today in a different variety. Right now, he's got to own the darn football. He can't put the ball on the ground. Um, but it was great to see him. We know he's an explosive weapon. Jay Ducker, right, seeing some good things. But in turn, right, we talked about how good Brandon Thomas was. Being able to count on him to own the football in a four-minute situation. Like last year, you told me to put him in on a four-minute. I would say, yeah, no, thanks. Let's find somebody else to do it. Uh, so a huge trust in Brandon Thomas. Then all of a sudden you go back, there's an 18-year-old out there carrying the ball, right? Sutton Smith, he looked pretty darn good too. So now all of a sudden you're sitting there saying, okay, they got Caden stepped up. Wait a second, now there's a true freshman, Sutton Smith, playing running back. Oh, but what, by the way, Brandon Thomas looked pretty good. Jay Ducker looked pretty good. Ace Smart, we were able to continue to sprinkle in and do some things here. So now all of a sudden you look at that along with all those other things, we feel like we've got good depth at good positions. Going back to that question, we're always going to uh, be cognizant of everything that we're going to do, whether it's in recruiting high school guys and continue to develop high school guys. I'm always going to hang my hat on the development of high school guys. And uh, I don't read the media, but someone's going to say, why the heck do you keep bringing this up? We still have a very young team, right? Probably now 75% sophomores and younger. That's still those high school guys. But those transfer guys are stepping up, and it's been fun to watch. We've got to continue to ask a lot of them, and we'll continue to keep our eye on it in recruiting, just like we will with everything so else. So is it fun now seeing, again, you mentioned the depth and everything, but is it fun now seeing that depth produce instead of just talking about the depth? The fun came in the win, you know. But yes, yes, Evan, yes. The fun, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, that's what the fun comes in because I, I, I was not having any fun until that clock got double zero. I mean, so. But yes, it's good to see what it is. It shows the belief in okay, we're going to continue to develop that depth and be able to see it produce absolutely. Because I can sit here up here and say, hey, we got depth, we got this, and you guys saying, well, Ryan, where the heck is it? And to be able to see it show up on a night like tonight in a full quarter game, uh, I was proud of that. Uh, if you kick, we, we kicked the ball out of bounds too many times, and that's a bad deal. And we can't do that, and we just can't put up with that. Uh, you know, we talked about how good the field goal kicking, extra point kicking game is, right? But uh, we can't do that with you know well, kickoffs and, and, and whoever can give us the best opportunity to kick the ball, hopefully into the end zone in the right direction, uh, even if it's not a touchback to be able to cover down. But it, once you kick it out of bounds, you know, you put your defense in a tough spot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Mark, it, what's interesting is you go, look, and I don't like to compare it. This game is completely different different than the Navy game, different than the Mississippi State game. But that's kind of been the run game, like, right, oh, there's an eight-yard gain, but then nothing, nothing, nothing. And then the middle of the third quarter, you're like, man, these guys can finally run the ball. And so I don't want to be one of those teams that's body blows, body blows, body blows, and then the third quarter, we're able to wear them down. Now, if that's what it takes to get us to win games, that's fine. But we're also going to take what they give us. And that's what's great about having such an intelligent quarterback that's going to sit there and say, okay, if that safety's flying down or they're playing that adjuster in the box, we're going to take what they give us. And, and we got a smart quarterback that's going to take advantage. And that's why you're able to see some of those other guys, those playmakers, step up because, okay, they want to stop the run. Here's what we're going to do. And at the end, I think, in reality, a lot of that running the ball effectively was the, the will to finish the game. And uh, that's what was cool, kind of cool to see the guys have, hey, we're going to will this thing, whatever it looks like, even if we weren't doing a good enough job uh, as we need to consistently up front um, with what we got to do. And sometimes we're bouncing the ball out. And so it's just trusting the tracks of what we got to do. Um, but yeah, again, it goes back to, I'd love to be able to say, okay, let's run the ball for uh, 
40 yards in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and then at the end of the day, we'll like, you know, 160 yards rushing, and then let's see what we're going to do in the passing game. But I think you just got to be, okay, what, what's the defense giving us? Um, but again, it shows that we're capable. So I'm not saying you're just pulling my hair out saying, we got no chance to run the football. I think we saw some good things from that today, some good things from the running backs. Again, it goes back to that term I use, consistency, Mark. We just got to find a way. How do we get it, right? Because at the, the beginning of the game, we're like, man, we're not hitting on all cylinders. What do we need to do? Um, but as we found a, a rhythm, and I think part of it was the excitement of playing at home opener. I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. I wanted our guys, I went over to Seth and said, let's take a deep breath. Man, take a deep breath. Let's go play football like we know. This is just this is a Tuesday or Wednesday practice. We've worked hard all week. Let's go out there and execute at a high level. Coach, and he mean, certainly did. Ball. Yes, sir. And it's you guys know my passion um, for the city and this this home crowd. It's awesome, right? We have to we have to be able to win games at home, right? No matter what it looks like. We this is a fantastic home field advantage for us. Um, we've got not to steal an an, an ad. We got to protect this house in, in every way, shape, or form. Our guys have a sense of pride being able to play here in front of the crowd. We knew what the opening season would look like with two away games, um, but to be able to come back and do it in this form or fashion versus what a lot of people consider still a regional rivalry game. There's a lot of, I've had a lot of people from the old Memphis State, they say, Coach, man, this is a huge rivalry, and we knew it was going to be a battle. Uh, every single one is. Guess what? Next Saturday is going to be a tough, hard fight, and, uh, but it's fun to do it in your front of your home crowd. I'm excited we get that opportunity to do it again next weekend. You know, what was concerning, Frank, for me is I understand teams are going to maintain the draft. They have a six-year quarterback that's really good, and he was able to find the deficiencies in certain parts. Um, the, the explosive plays kind of bothered me. We still got to clean up tackling. I thought, we, you know, we missed too many tackles again, and we've got to get back to being great at the fundamentals. Um, you know, if a team's able to put together a 12-play drive, sure, but we can't, you know, we, wide open wheel route, you know, wide open on the seam. I thought, you know, some of those things we've got to be able, we can't have any blown coverages, if you will, and we can't allow the explosive runs. There's times guy found it and shuffled. I mean, there's, you know, in and out. Sometimes you're like, wow, the defense looks really good, and then other times it's, man, how do we play cleaner football? Um, they got the stop when it mattered most, but you're right, Frank, we just got to find, going back to what I was talking about, Really, in, in all three phases, how do we be more consistent? I think we're going to go say, okay, what do we have on defense? How do we get to get better? You did get that, that, that turnover late, keeping that streak alive of getting the turnover. I guess how, how reassuring is that 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 is still going on? As long, whenever that turnover belt gets to come out, I don't care if it's uh, with zero or zero on the clock, that turnover belt gets to come out. and. Uh, it's good. That's one of those things. We're going to have to continue to own the football. And I, I preach it probably at nauseum to our guys. They hear me t say, own the football. And they always know it's going to be a key to the victory every single week. And that's not coach speak, but if we're able to take care of the football on offense and then be able to go get a takeaway, we obviously would love to have more than one on defense, right? Going back to the, the question about stats, then we give ourselves a heck of a chance to win the football game.